Hello everyone! Welcome to the Theories of International Relations course. Today, we will continue with Chapter 3, Liberalism. In this chapter, we will firstly discuss classical liberalism, then classical liberal theory of international relations and liberal internationalism, and lastly, neoliberal institutionalism. Let's start with classical liberalism. International relations as a discipline was born following the devastation and trauma of the World War I. At that time, the scholars were trying to understand international politics through empirical methods and both reform the international system and promote peace between nations through universal normative concerns. This was a dual challenge whereby both realism and idealism were at work. According to classical liberalism, states ought to be minimal, which means that every issue area, except military, law enforcement and other non-excludable goods, ought to be left to the dealings of citizens. However, in time, modern liberalism has become associated with a more active role for state in economics for a redistribution of wealth and power with the aim of equity in society. In classical liberalism, individual is the main object of study, not groups, societies or nations. In this essential principle of liberalism, freedom of the individual is based on negative freedom, which is freedom from arbitrary authority, and includes freedom of conscience, a free press, free speech, equality under the law, the right to hold and exchange property. Free market is the most widely used spontaneous order in liberal studies as a type of regularity in human affairs and a product of evolution of social practices. The level of state interference with the public and private spheres has been a topic of discussion among the liberals. According to classical liberals, the state has three duties. Protection of its people from invasion of other states, protection of each individual in society from oppression of other members, including protection of property, and provision of public services and sustainability of the social institutions important for both individual freedom and peaceful coexistence. Let's move on to classical liberal theory of international relations. As the basic unit of analysis is taken to be the human being, classical liberals have concentrated on the human nature and actions in explaining international relations. Due to the anarchical nature of the international system that lacks a central authority, international law is enforced by the states themselves and the different interpretations of rules may lead to conflicts. Generally, states recognize that it is in their interest to conform to international law. According to classical liberalism, international law must be restricted to the international protection of individual rights. This has been the ground for the establishment of the international governmental organizations since the 19th century. However, classical liberals opposed to the extension of the tasks of the League of Nations and the way the United Nations was organized. Classical liberalism has seen it important to maintain order through the preservation of a balance of power, which is thought to have the characteristics of spontaneous order. Our next topic is liberal internationalism. Based on the principles of enlightenment and classical liberal theory of international relations, liberal internationalism reached its zenith during the interwar years. Generally speaking, liberal internationalists believe that it is possible to overcome international anarchy through international cooperation and collaboration based on international law. However, the idealism of internationalist thinkers provided a large room for realists to criticize them. Cold War provided room to maneuver for the liberals in the shape of economic interdependence and integration in Western Europe. On the other hand, liberalism as an ideology was confronted by communism and the foreign policies of the liberal states were criticized in some cases on the ground of not being liberal in the classical sense. Beginning in 1970s, the liberal theory evolved into a more realist version compared with both classical liberalism and liberal internationalism. 
Our final topic for today is neoliberal institutionalism. The major objective in liberalism is to figure out the conditions conducive to international collaboration, if not peace. Neoliberal institutionalists study calculations of interests and how organizations monitor compliance with the rules of cooperation. Through liberal lenses, cooperation is a positive sum game, which means that all participants benefit from its outcomes. Another characteristic of the liberal tradition is that liberals reject the distinction made by realists between international and domestic politics since they see foreign policy as an extension of the latter. This is also why they do not differentiate between the political processes in the two spheres and analyze the decision-making processes as a multi-actor pluralism of individuals interacting with each other. As societies become enmeshed in a web of economic and social ties, it becomes difficult to disregard web of relations and resort to unilateral actions, such as use of force. With the increase in complex interdependence, neoliberal institutionalists have invented a concept known as global governance. What these scholars expect is increasing institutionalization in different issue areas like trade, finance, environment, security, and health and their effects of globalization. As regards global governance, from a normative point of view, what is needed is a new globalism based on the principle of equality of peoples and civilizations. As mentioned before, the liberal thesis is that free trade and democracy decrease the likelihood of war. The major question is then whether the democracies are more peaceful or not in their foreign relations. Democratic peace theory follows the idea that democracies can maintain peaceful relations among themselves due to their shared values and common approach in their domestic republican governance. Following the liberal tradition, democratic peace theory is based on faith in human rationality, capability of maintaining peace, ability to overcome anarchy and power politics, and peace-enhancing effects of trade. The major critique against this research program is that the liberal governments may hide their real interests behind the camouflage or spreading the liberal and democratic ideology to others. Another point is the difficulty to define democracy. In the lack of a consensus on the key concept democracy itself, it is problematic to test the hypothesis of the democratic peace theory. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 3 of the Theories of International Relations course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 4.